So here we have got a, a fixed control volume. So you can see this arbitrary shape. This is the control volume, one inlet, one outlet. In reality, we may have more than one inlet, more than one outlet. So here we have only one inlet, one outlet, and you can see the corresponding the energy flows. So we have three things. So this has one. This is the flow energy, V square over two kinetic energy. This is the potential energy. You all know. And this is the total energy and we got the mass flow rate here so this is the the mass flow energy you can say so according to the theories in this control volume we said the net rate of it of the energy transfer so what is it is in this control volume the net rate of energy transfer by the heat energy and the work energy so the heat in and the work in so that's the input it will be equal to the the difference of this uh, incoming and outgoing energy flows so what we can write this plus this it is equal you see there this uh, the heat energy and the work energy uh, this is actually this is the input it is equal to the inflow and the outflow so you look here this is the the outflow minus the inflow that means the energy inside the control volume it is constant during the steady flow processes or in other words you can say the change of the you know, the energy inside this control volume this is zero so as we need these summations when we have more than one inlets or more than one outlets but here we have only one inlets one outlet so you just cancel out this okay so if you cancel out this and now we can say okay this is point one and this is point two so we de will define this way so what you can uh, write it down this is uh, for the outlet so we can write it like m um, dot is to v2 square over 2 g z1 minus this is the m dot you know has 1 v1 square over 2 g z1 okay so that we just use these notations like this 1 and 2 for inlet and outlet and now if we simplify this if we simplify this m is the common term here so if we make this term common so it will be c h2 minus h1 b2 square minus v1 square over 2 and g j2 minus j1 so that's the expression we got once we have this expression right so here we have the mass flow rate m now if we divide the mass flow rate for both left hand and the right hand side then we can simply say okay this mass flow it will cancel out each other and then if we this is you know the total the rate of heat transfer the work transfer if we divide by the mass flow then we will get the you know uh, this term it will be you now the small q or we can we can write it like this yeah we can write it like this the q net in the w shaped in this is it was the the rate of so when we express the rate of change then it is dot now we divide by mass mass flow rate so then it is not anymore the rate of change it is the net heat in net you know the work due to the shaft this is the shaft torque and this m dot this m dot will cancel out each other so we'll get these expressions so now once we have this we know the uh, enthalpy definitions enthalpy definition it is u plus p over rho u is the internal energy and this is p over rho pressure density this is the flow energy so the combination of the internal and the flow energy this is called the enthalpy and enthalpy it is a combined property it is just the um, internal energy and the flow energy so now we have the enthalpy here so if we substitute this value like when it is the outlet we can say it is h2 u2 p2 you know this way rho 2 this way when it is for inlet h1 u1 p1 rho 1 so now we will substitute the value here so h2 is say u2 p2 over rho 2 and minus it is h1 and p on rho 1 and the rest of the term it is same b1 square v2 square over 2 and g z2 minus z1 now if we simplify this 
and then you see we will get this expression here so now we have this we have the in the Q 19 W shaped 19 now if we simplify this for the input and the output so we'll get this expression you see the shaft org and the peon over row peon squared gj on we just simplified this and if you look the left hand side we have four terms the right hand side we have this three and this one so all of this this is the mechanical input energy okay the for this this you know that's first three term of the right hand side this is the mechanical outputs and you can see this u2 it is actually internal energy um, so for ideal flow if what is ideal flow that means no no irreversibility is there that means um, we will neglect the frictional effects okay so we'll say okay there is no friction so if it is the case then the mechanical energy the input and the output it should be equal and energy it should be a conserved property that means the mechanical energy to the left hand and the right hand side should be same so then the internal energy term will be zero so let me write it down here when it is ideal flow that means no mechanical energy loss okay so when there is no mechanical energy loss then we can say the u2 minus u1 minus q net in this is equal to zero and if it is equal to zero then we can say it is kind of like this u2 u1 minus q net in equal to zero so if you um, put this q net in to the right hand side like then it will be q net in equal q2 u2 minus e1 but when we have the mechanical energy laws that means when we are considering all the irreversibilities like the friction and other effects then we'll consider this is the the energy loss the mechanical energy loss so earlier i said this term the the left hand side this is the mechanical input this three term this is the mechanical output and this u2 minus e1 q netting this is the mechanical energy loss so the total expression it will be like this the energy in that means the input you are providing you will get this output and all the mechanical system is not 100 percent efficient so we have some loss we'll get some loss so that's the energy loss and now you will see this expression is like this the the modified energy equation is like this but as uh, we need to keep in mind the you know the 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 work the mechanical work input okay um, when you're talking about the sharp torque this is actually the difference between the pump and the turbine so now if you substitute the sharp torque in equal the pump work and the turbine work here so it will be the w pump minus w turbine plus the rest of the terms so what we did we just substitute this w shaft 19 equal this here and then uh, we simplified this definitely this w pump this is actually the mechanical work input due to the pump or the compressor or fan any mechanical devices so when we're trying to uh, provide some input so w pump is the mechanical work input the w turbine this is the mechanical work output it is due to the turbine okay so for um, incompressible flow um, okay we can write it like this now if we simplify these equations so as the pump the blue pump this is the mechanical pump work we just put in the left hand side this is the input the turbine this is the output we put in the right hand side so this is actually the and this is the loss so this is in the general form you can say for unit mass now if you consider for the mass flow rate then you just multiply that m dot here and then it will be now the you know the, the rate rate of change so this expressions um we know this is the the energy equations but by conventions when we're talking about the irreversible pumps we know uh, the system mechanical system is not 100 percent efficient so we must need to consider the irreversibilities so the irreversible pump and the turbine loss um, will treat separately 
okay and in engineering system when we write down the energy equation the most common term is the h we'll discuss the h later on and this is when we introduce the h then you see the energy equations it becomes like this previously it was like the 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 pump W pump and the W turbine that was the mechanical work input and the output now we just put this is the the heads the pump heads and the turbine heads pump heads in simple word pump heads or the pumping heads or simply heads this is you can see the maximum height like the pump um, can discharge the water that means when the pump is discharging the water the maximum height it can travel uh, there's you can say the head so this is the pump head and how this is the most common uh, term of the you know, the energy equations and we usually use uh, the energy equation in terms of heads and where this head cell this is the head loss okay so, so we'll um, we'll discuss this head loss later on here you can see how you can get the heads the pump heads you can simply divide m dot g with the you know with this term here and then you will get the pump heads the same thing for the turbine heads so this is the expressions uh, we actually need to know when we will solve some problem we may use this and this is the you know the head loss so head loss could be minor loss and the major loss we will discuss this later on uh, we can quickly discuss here so there are two types of uh, head loss one is the major head loss another one is the minor head loss the major one it could be the frictional and the minor loss it is due to the opening bends joints valves and here we have two expressions when it is the major head loss this is due to the friction or the resistance so we need the frictional coefficient frictional factors so when you're talking about the total head loss it is just the combination of the major and the minor head loss so when we will solve some problem we'll discuss it so that's it for now